following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. Everybody <laughs> loves somebody, some, some time. I feel beautiful. The only thing is, I had to see my doctor this morning about my throat. It was all red. Luckily, it turned out to be just an impacted pimento. <laughs> he also checked my eyes, and he said my eyes were 40-40. That means I've got perfect double vision. <laughs> yeah, I've been trying to take care of myself, but my back's been bothering me. I, I sprained it real bad last night. I hung my pants in the closet and forgot to take them off. <laughs> I tell you, I was in bad shape. This morning, I even had trouble shaving. I cut the mirror three times. <laughs> oh, before I forget, I gotta make a very important announcement. I'm gonna have to ask all you people in the theater not to leave chewing gum all over the seats. It creates a problem. Half the people in tonight's audience are still stuck here from last week. <laughs> now, don't you go away, because there's a nice man to tell you who my guests are tonight. The Dean Martin Show, starring Barbara Feldon, Van Johnson, Paul Lynn, Irene Ryan, and Les Brown and his band of renown. Like you look down on the common folk like me Making bets to what degree of fool we are Through your rose-colored windows You see yourself above us Standing in the mud, gazing at the stars What the rich and poor have in common The common cold, the heartburn and the heartache Put our pants on just the same Your word don't make you better, babe I can tread water, babe, as long as you think you can make it rain. Why you get your raisin, girl, in your diamond-studded world? I got pulled up on the hungry side of town. I cut my teeth on bacon rind. Ain't no hide as tough as mine, but it might be fun a while to be your clown. So get your whip and do your thing and I'll run around the ring Ride my white horse, wear my arms But I don't easy blister, babe I'll be your court jester, babe But don't think you won't pay the fiddler too When you put your hand in mine Was a shocking time to find The water hot, the current strong, deep and wet had me struggling for a time, dangling on your line, but never fear, this fish would never sweat. But playing with my mind, I'll be playing with your money, honey, as long as your account can stand the drain. I'll fan the flame and make it hotter, cause I think I can walk my water, as long as you think you can make it rain. You appeared, they looked around, found a random star up in the east. Hey, but I don't see no halo, just a little girl with a lot of gold. Want one more trinket for her golden chain. Well, you got a hot one hanging, kid. Don't let her say you never did your best. Be my guest, make it rain.
say, his voice is so sexy, the other day they caught a peeping Tom looking down his throat. <laughs> hey, you are a great audience, and after the show, we're all going over to the May Company basement and tie knots in all the pantyhose. <laughs> What a wonderful show tonight. Van Johnson's here, Paul Lynn, Barbara Felton, and from the Beverly Hillbillies, we got Irene Ryan. She is a great gal. Every week, she sends me a dozen eggs, and to make sure they don't break, she sends them scrambled. Oh, yes. It's always nice to have Van Johnson on the show. I guess you all know him as the guy who always gets the girl in the movie, except once when the girl screamed and the usher threw him out. Oh, yes. Anyway, here... The stuff is working now. Uh, <laughs> a little sauce never hurt nobody. Listen, anyway, here's a beautiful guy, and I mean, he's a wonderful guy, a great performer, and a real dear friend of mine, Mr. Van Johnson. Free and easy, that's my style. How did you mean? Watch me smile, fare thee well be after a while. Was I gonna roam? And any place I hang my hat is home. Sweetening water, sherry wine. Thank you kindly, suits me fine. Kansas City, Caroline. Any place I hang my hat is home Birds roosting in a tree Pick up and go And the going cruise That's how it ought to be I pick up too When the spirit moves me Across the river Around the bend Stranger, so long, friend. There's a voice in the lonesome wind that keeps whispering wrong. I'm going where the welcome mat is, no matter where that is, cause any place I hang my hat is home. Going where the welcome mat is, no matter where that is, cause any I look forward to seeing you on the show, because we always sit around and we chatter. Yeah, what do you want to chat about, Dean? I don't know. What do you want to chatter about? Well, why don't we stop wasting time? You know we're going to talk about girls, so let's get on with it. Yeah, we got some new singers on the show this year, and there's one... Well, I'll tell you right now, I wouldn't mind going 32 bars with her. <laughs> you know, that's interesting, Dean. I mean, the way a person talks about girls usually depends on what he does for a living. What do you mean? Well, you're uh, a singer. What do you mean? You're a singer. So you said you'd like to go 32 bars with her. Yeah. Now, being an actor myself, I'd probably say something like, I'd sure like to check her motivation. <laughs> well, does that mean a bread man would say, I'd like to have her cupcakes in my truck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. You know what I mean. <laughs> Or if you were a meter reader, you'd say, I'd like to measure her kilowatts. Mm-hmm. Or if you were a gardener, you'd say, how do you like to rake her leaves? <laughs> or a tugboat captain? Yeah, I wouldn't mind giving her a little too. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Hey, Van! Uh, uh, what about a weatherman? I'd love to get caught in a shower with her. Here's one, Dean. A bricklayer. I pass. <laughs> we ought to set this to music. You got it, pal. Standing on the corner, watching all the girls go by. Man, look at the girders on that. Ah. Standing on the corner, watching all the girls go by. Now 
would you like to bail her hay? Look what is handed on with us her occupation. Woo! Matter of fact, but neither do I. They're standing on the corner watching all the girls, watching all the girls, watching all the girls go by. I'd love to pull rank on her. Standing on the corner watching all the girls go by. Hey, Z, reckon I'd like to trap her bear. Standing on the corner giving all the girls the eye. Hey, I'd like to spoil her broth. Try standing on the corner, watching all the girls, watching all the girls. How'd you like her to keep your wig warm? <laughs> watching all the girls. treat for you now, one of television's all-time favorite characters, the one and only Granny Clampett. Here she is, the wonderful star of the Beverly Hillbillies, Miss Irene Ryan. You're putting me on. You're Irene Ryan. You're Granny. Huh? I'm afraid I'm Irene. But you don't look like no Beverly Hillbilly. You look more like some society New York queen or something. You know that? Well, huh? you know how it is, Dean. I'm an actress. Granny Clampett is just a character that I've created. You're so completely different. Like Oil and Water, Jekyll and Hyde, Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, Dean. People are people. Yeah? Oh, sir. Hillbillies are no different than anybody else. Oh, they might talk a little bit different. Yeah? And they might walk a little bit different. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> But her clothes are a little bit different. <laughs> but down deep, we're all the same. Okay. I'm here singing and there's no one there. I smell blossoms and the trees are bare. All day long, I seem to walk on air. I wonder why. Naturally. <laughs> yes. This is my first affair. They'll never believe you. Being in love. <laughs> oh, all over my bones. 
I just had my whole body tattooed all over with a map of the United States. San Francisco, I'm going home again. Now listen, no, okay, girls. Now let's pull ourselves together. It's time to sing on the next cast. Excuse me, girls. <laughs> Mr. Martin, I've come to capture you. <laughs> capture me? Yes, I'm Farley Wainwright, interior decorator. Come with me. You ain't gonna capture me, buddy. <laughs> you don't understand. The network hired me to capture your personality in this room. When I'm through redecorating, millions of viewers will sit by their TV sets and instantly feel your essence. <laughs> feel my essence? Martin, this room is a hodgepodge of ticky-tacky. <laughs> My ideas are revolutionary. I once did a city hall entirely in peanut butter. <laughs> it was magnificent, but the pigeon stuck to the roof of the building. Well, you seem pretty qualified. What do you think you'll, uh, how, you think, how do you improve this room, huh? A hand grenade would do it. Look at those walls. <laughs> the texture is unbearable. Mr. Martin, what you need is something in the woods. Now you're talking. <laughs> Personally, I recommend rosewood. What? Rosewood. Well, if rosewood, I would. <laughs> now, uh, in place of this couch, I see a bed. The bed was invented in Egypt, you know. I wonder they had so many mummies. <laughs> you know, it's fascinating that the first bed was carved completely out of wood. I bet that wasn't easy. <laughs> the hardest part was carving all those feathers for the mattress. <laughs> and that awful bookcase has to go. You need an occasional p in here. I'll buy that. <laughs> corner we need the we need the classical touch perhaps something old and greek how about a picture of uh, Ar aristotle on us <laughs> uh, i uh, i said old not prehistoric oh. what i had in mind was a grecian urn what's a grecian urn whatever she can get Just a little joke, breaks them up down at the showroom. Oh, it does. <laughs> huh? Actually, a Grecian urn is a large vase. Don't you mean vase? To a decorator, it's a vase. How soon can I get it? Oh, in one or two does. <laughs> <laughs> and here's something for your shelf. A, uh, a statue of Buddha carved from the ivory of the great Indian elephant. It required the work of 500 men. 500 men to make that? One to carve it and 499 to hold the elephant still. <laughs> And over here, I can just see you sitting on your poof. Sitting on my what? Your poof. A poof is a, a, a large overstuffed seat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you big kidder. <laughs> you know, Mr. Martin, you're decorating. You must let your imagination run the gamut. I once did a powder room in early Africa. In the trade, it was known as the shrunken head. <laughs> Actually, for someone as flamboyant as you, what this room needs is a burst of color. I, I've, I've surveyed the spectrum and plucked just the color for you. I can't wait to see what you pluck. <laughs> pink, Mr. Martin. I see you surrounded by pink. Pink? That's right. Banish the black, burn the blue, and bury the beige. <laughs> from now on, Mr. Martin, Think pink, think pink when you decorate your room. Think pink, think pink, and get rid of all of this gloom. 
Red is dead, blue is through, green's obscene, brown's taboo, and there's not the slight excuse for plum or puce or chartreuse. <laughs> think pink, think pink on the long, long road ahead. Think pink, think pink, and the world is rosy red. Everything on the great horizon, everything that you can think, and that includes the kitchen sink. That's the kitchen sink. I wouldn't mind having dishpan hands. <laughs> Be honest, Mr. Martin, isn't this a lot more bright and cheery? Sure is. I'm already feeling in the pink. <laughs> what you doing, son? Just rocking, Ma. At my age, is exciting. What time is it? It's October. How old are you now, boy? How close to 75. How close? 86. <laughs> Sun? No, that's the moon. <laughs> huh? Yeah, that, that's you, moon. Call me, son. <laughs> I gotta talk to you, son, about this here generation gap. Between them ages of 75 and 100, something terrible happens. What happens? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing? 25 years of nothing. It's that time of life when your get up and go got up and went. <laughs> but you kids today, you know where it's at. I know where it's at, but I'm too pooped to go get it. <laughs> but look at you, Ma. You're a hundred years old, but you're in perfect condition. Strong, hot-blooded, impulsive. How do you do it? Do what? I forget. Well, let's go in and watch TV. That sexy new movie from Sweden is on. It's about two people who fall madly and passionately in love when they're both over 90. What's it called? I'm curious, wrinkled. <laughs> <laughs> well, you all know my pal Ken Lane here. Oh, poor Ken. Every time he shaves, he cuts himself. His legs are a mess. <laughs> Put your arms around me, honey. Hold me tight. Baby, don't let go. I'm higher than a kite. <laughs> Whereas they give me some men who are stout-hearted men, and I'll trade them all in for a broad. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go to the couch, but before I go, remember the famous words of Arnold Palmer, who once said, you show me a man that leaves a warm bed at seven in the morning to play golf in the rain, and I'll show you a guy with an ugly wife. <laughs> I came by to see if you'd like to ring my chimes. <laughs> <laughs>
That's my fault. Confessing that I love you. Tell me, do you love me too? I'm confessing that I need you. Honest, I do. Need you at a moment. In your eyes I read such strange things But your lips deny their truth Will your answer really change things Making me blue I'm afraid someday you leave me Saying can't we still be friends If you go you know you grieve me All in life on you the pain That I love you over me. I'm confessing that I love you. Introduce a super spy and a super talent. You all know her as Don Adams' wife on Get Smart. And here she is appearing with Van Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, the very lovely Barbara Feldman. <laughs> So well, and it must be easy to tell that we think each other is perfectly swell. Ponies on stage. 
Saying through this costume. Well, I'll tell you something. The view I get isn't so hot. Now, you call yourself a dancer. The only reason you know you've got a left foot is that you've got two of them. Oh, come on. Oh, why we don't. Partners. And we're going to stay partners. Through endless years. No doubt and fear. about you saw him with uh, my gold diggers this last summer and he's a real funny guy ladies and gentlemen very talented mr. Jackie Gale thank you ladies and gentlemen and it's a you know I'll tell you something folks you know being in show business you live a hectic life you're always grabbing a plane and rushing from one place to another and you never get to see anything so I finally decided to do something about it. Get in a car and drive cross country. And it's boring. It is boring. By the second day, you're looking at the billboards, you're reading the, looking at the roadside stands, and you gotta be leery of those roadside stands. You ever see those signs? All the orange juice you could drink for 25 cents? I pulled over, the man gave me an empty glass and pointed me toward an orange grove. <laughs> and you see those signs, Bill's Diner. 10 miles, 8 miles, great food, fine atmosphere, air conditioning, 5 miles to Bill's Diner. By this time, you're starving. Then you get to an empty lot and you see a sign, this is the site of the new Bill's Diner. <laughs> but you're crazy. When you drive through those towns, they all look the same. You could tell the people that live there don't have any respect for the town. When you go to the park and you see the statue on the horse is the local plumber. <laughs> that, that drew, they have no respect. You don't see any millionaires in those kind of towns either. Because the minute anybody puts $100 together, they leave. <laughs> And I'll tell you something, when you drive alone, it's dangerous because you start to think too much. And that's what I did. I was driving alone reviewing the highlights of my career and I almost fell asleep. <laughs> and you've got to find things to amuse yourself. So I found something to do. When you get to a toll bridge, try this if you want to. Give the guy a quarter and say, here's a quarter for the car in back of me. And watch the guy going nuts trying to figure out why you paid. <laughs> here's what you see through a rear view mirror. He paid him, you paid him. Yeah, yeah. Makes you watch the guy in his way, they're waving at you, great miles, you're driving bananas for 25 cents. <laughs> now notice wherever you drive today, the whole country is being built up. Las Vegas, Nevada, they keep putting up hotels every two minutes. You think the big show business personalities are making all the money, it's not true, it's the bricklayers. <laughs> Did you ever get those restaurants down south? You go into one of those waitresses, they're really something. I went to this lady and says, can I have a menu? We don't have a menu, very friendly. I said, what do you got? We got combo grits, peas and greens, red-eyed beans and greens and beans. And I thought it was Phil Harris in a dress. So I didn't want to take any chance. I said, give me some eggs, toast, and coffee. She said, you want grits? I said, what? Grits. I said, I don't want grits. Eat the grits. You eat the grits. If you eat grits, it's matzo balls dipped in cement. It looks like farina that didn't make it. You go in this country, all they're doing is opening up chicken house. Everywhere you go, chicken, chicken, chicken. Did you ever eat some of that chicken? They buy the ones that suffocate on the truck. <laughs> I think you're talking about all this and give me a terrible heartburn. I'll see you later. I'll tell you, I gotta go. <laughs> the job in the world is being a hotel chambermaid, going around every morning picking up things people leave laying around on the floor. Cigarette butts, clothes, bottles, me. <laughs> Ever wonder what uh, goes through their minds? Here's Miss Irene Ryan once again to give you an idea. You can go over to 12.06. I'll finish up here myself. Okay, Gladys. I want to 
to do an extra special good job because this is Mr. Dean Martin's suite. Everybody loves a somebody sometime. Oh, look. A cigarette butt. <laughs> and to think that this once touched Dean Martin's lips. <laughs> I'll keep it for my collection. <laughs> oh, look. Publicity photographs. What a handsome man. Reminds me of my first husband, Harold. He liked to bring a little sunshine to people's lives, too. He was a window washer. <laughs> oh, he was some man, my Harold. I used to love watching him leave the house every morning. His pail in one hand and his squeegee in the other. Even the other window cleaners used to say nobody handles a squeegee like Harold. <laughs> oh, look. What consideration. Look how nice and neat he left all his empties in the wastebasket. <laughs> That's what I call class. Just like my Harold. <laughs> was on, or come out of the bathroom dripping like a dying swan, or call a visitor a slob until the slob was gone. He had refinement. In the water at Coney Island was our first embrace, when my water wings flew off and hit him in the face. He introduced himself before he put them back in place. He had refinement. One time he said, may I suggest you call a lady's chest a chest instead of her points of interest? <laughs> Ain't he? <laughs> Ain't he? He had respect and feeling all our married life. Just the thought that maybe he'd hurt me, cut him like a knife. So he never mentioned that he had another wife. He had refinement. Oh, 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 Mr. Martin. Oh, Mr. Martin. Don't let me disturb you. I just forgot my glasses. <laughs> And my bottle, too. <laughs> See what I mean? A gentleman to his fingertips was he. Hello, Dean. Hey, I wonder if you'd do me a favor. Well, sure, anything. <laughs> I wonder if I could use your head for a minute. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not, I'm not through with it yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't understand. You see, I'm studying phrenology. Phrenology? Mm -hmm. hmm? Phrenology? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. That's the uh, science of assessing a person's character by the structure of his skull. Oh, how do it work? Well, I'd be very happy to show you. Uh, do you mind if I feel your bumps? Hmm. You sure you're reading your lines right there? <laughs> no, I'm afraid it's all very scientific. You see, supposedly, you can tell all about a person by the bumps on his skull. Like some people have more well-developed bumps than others. You know, some people have very large bumps, some people have very small bumps. Well, that's Hollywood for you, you know. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's really fascinating. You know, lately I've had the opportunity of feeling some very famous people's bumps. <laughs> Gee, and, and you look like such a nice girl, you know? For example, I'll bet you didn't know that Sophia Loren has very tiny bumps. You're putting me on. <laughs> <laughs> well, she must wear padded hats. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh. Now, would you like to hear some more? 
Uh, only if, you, only if, you, what, if what you have to say has a redeeming social content, you know what I mean? <laughs> I know what you mean. Why don't you just relax and just let me run my fingers through your bumps? <laughs> <clears throat> okay, but promise you, you'll respect me afterwards. <laughs> now, let's see. Uh, oh, this bump indicates uh, your level of intelligence, right? And then uh, this bump here uh, indicates your sensitivity. And then uh, <laughs> this little bump right here, that indicates your creativity. And my goodness, I wonder what this bump indicates. That indicates a low ceiling in the men's room. That's what that <laughs> Do you know something? This is very surprising. I would never have guessed this. What's that? Well, according to your bumps, <laughs> you're very quiet and contemplative and sober, and you have absolutely no interest in the opposite sex. Now, how do you explain that? Simple. The NBC census won't let me wear my real head on television. That's all. <laughs> Hey, uh, but Barbara felt, but ladies, Barbara, by, while Barbara's making her change, let me tell you about her next number. You know, a lot of people complain about the way kids talk today. They say you can't understand half the things they say. They forget that when they were kids, it was just the same. Here's a song from the 40s that's going to bring back a lot of memories to a lot of people. And here's Barbara. found a fellow almost completely divine but his vocabulary is killing this romance of mine oh what's a poor little girl to do how can he be so old-fashioned doesn't he know it's 1942 Every time we kiss, he says, murder, he says. At a time like this, he says, murder, he says. Is that the language of love? Says, solid, he says. Takes me in his arms and says, solid, he says. Meaning all my charms, he says, solid, he says. Is that the language of love? He says, chick, chick, you torture me, suit. Are we living? I'm thinking of leaving him flat. He says, dig, dig, the jumps the old ticker is given. Now he can talk. He says, murder, he says, every time we kiss, he says, murder, he says, keep it up like this and that murder, he says, in that impossible tone, we'll bring on nobody's murder but his own. Hubba, hubba. He sounds like his uppers don't fit He says murder, he says Every time we kiss, he says murder, he says Keep it up like this and that murder, he says In that impossible tone We'll bring on nobody's murder but his own Jackson, Solid Jackson, mop, mop Hey, Bob, Reba, hubba, hubba Give me some skin on the jersey side Think my zoot suit with a rape plate and beat me down in the eighth of a ball Sure. I'm just telling you to get down in the nitty-gritty, telling it like it is, doing my thing, letting it all hang out where the action is, you dig? I did. I was in the first place. Oh. Lamar and Fanny Bartholomew, some of the stars we stay up to see on the late, late show. Great. 
Gregory Peck and Jennifer Jones, Zachary Scott and Edna May Oliver G. But we love the movies we see on the Late Late Show. Stick them up. <laughs> Young man, do you realize who I am? I am Giovanni Ferrucci, the great tenor of the Mozart Metropolitan Opera. I don't care who you are, buddy. Just give me your watch and your wallet. Now listen, I'm gonna get out of here and don't make a sound until I got out of sight or I'll shoot you. <laughs> America, are you having trouble sleeping? Whenever I have a sleepless night like this, it doesn't bother me anymore. Because the answer is right on my night table. Why toss and turn? When I can't sleep, all I do is get rid of my clock. <laughs> Back to our movie. All right, Lance. Now, in this next scene, I want you to open the door, burst into the bedroom, rush up to Raquel Welsh, grab her in your arms, kiss her savagely, and then make passionate love to her. You think you can handle it, Lance? Stunt man! <laughs> well, hi there, ladies. Do you have trouble removing those stubborn stains from your clothes on wash day? Now, there's a product guaranteed to remove stains in no time at all. New fascinating sizz. But don't just take my word for it. Let's put it to the test. Now, here, <laughs> here's a shirt with ground stain. We'll try to get the stain out with brand X. See, that nasty old stain is still there. Now, let's try the new fast acting, acting zizz, huh? Watch this. Watch it now. <laughs> That's right there. Look at that. Ha, 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 you, ha, ha. Look at that. It's, it won't even cut. There it is. Gone. Gone. Look at that. Now back to our movie. We should elope, Harold. Let's have a church wedding. If you want your girl to go a little farther, just add a little black for me to her drink. <laughs> now, word from our sponsor. What's the matter, Fred? Oh, my socks keep falling down. <laughs> Why don't you buy a pair of these new stretchies? No matter what I do, they never fall down. Watch this. <laughs> hey, that's great. What keeps them from falling down? Thumbtacks. <laughs> so now, back to our movie. But Pete, how can you even think of splitting up the act? Well, what can I do, George? Mr. Ziegfeld only wants me. It's my big chance. But we're such a great team, you and me. We belong together. Yeah, I guess you're right. I can't split up the act. Great. Now, come on, Pete. That's our cue. We're, let's go on. Oh, okay, dear. George. Thank 
all my wonderful guests for joining us. There's no R in joining. Join it. And I hope you all be back with us next week. We're going to have some great talent on the show. Don't forget to look in. In the meantime, keep all them cards and letters coming in, folks. And this week, I sure want to thank that little old lady who sent me the rabbit ears. I put them on my television set with the other rabbit ears, and now I got 18 sets. Everybody loves somebody.